you know what? You can hate on that all you want, but that looks factory. Just SteamOS booting up? Nothing new. Except this isn't a Steam Deck. Valve recently updated the SteamOS landing page and basically said, fuck around and find out. They even hit a download link here. Well, this is going to be my test subject. It is the Geekcom A5. Now, spec-wise, it should trade blows with the Steam Deck if all the hardware bits work. So I'm going to give SteamOS a download, check the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernoodle, and audio, run a couple of games, maybe try GeForce Now in-home streaming, and I want to see if this SD card makes with it working along with external storage. Oh, and it has to work with the Steam controller? Or it's dead to me. Let's get to it. Our adventure begins on the SteamOS landing page. We want to scroll down to the FAC and click here. Then scroll down to Reimage, install SteamOS, and here click. Blindly agree to the EULA and tap download. Now we have a BZIP archive that we can click to extract the recovery image. And it's going to take a minute. There it goes. Right click the image and open with Disk Image Writer. Select your flash drive and give it some password digits. After a few minutes to finish up and we're good to power off. Pop in the flash drive and hammer that delete key. And it's time to disable Secure Boot and set the flash drive to the first boot device. Save the changes and let's see what happens. Hey, that looks like it's Linuxing and look at that, a KDE desktop. Neat. Let's pick option four and read the warning because this will nuke the data on whatever drive you have in that NVMe hole. Click proceed and you get an extra five seconds to, you know, yank the power if you done goofed. Once it's done, click proceed to reboot the machine and scramble to take out the flash drive because you forgot to do it. Now we wait in this delightful void of perpetual darkness. Wait, what? Maybe? Hey, hopefully the keyboard works and it does. So language, time zone, and it picked up the wired connection. Nice. Now it's doing an update and this progress bar, man, that, that's some Windows 98 accuracy. Guess we're doing a reboot now. Pinky toes crossed. Well, I logged in and it's been sitting like this for about five minutes. Let's try a reboot before applying percussive maintenance. And look at that. I do love a button tapping minigame. Okay, straight to settings into system and that's a Geekcom A5 running SteamOS. Up first is Bluetooth because this entire experiment is dead. How about old devices? Oh, there it is. Yes, okay. Now we're cooking with evil gas. Time to check the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi. Looking good. Same goes for 5 gig. Love to see it. Audio's detected, but it originally defaulted to the headphones and I was able to drop to the desktop, open the audio control panel and disable the analog bits. There we go. HDMI out by default is best fault. Have to test out the SD card slot and yep, that's going to come in handy. And we might as well plug in an external drive. It's that easy? Apparently it's that easy. Let's have a look at the quick settings. Can't have a video about SteamOS without the performance overlay cranked to 11. Or not. Manual GPU clock does a whole lot of nothing. Whoop. Spoke too soon. It does that. All right. Let's try some games. Starting with a retro title from 2015. This is The Witcher 3 using the Steam Deck preset at 720p. And yeah, that preset looks a bit chunky on the big screen. The GPU bits are pegged at 99% while the CPU's snoozing around 30. And it's doing a good job staying above 40. Even when horse tech kicks in. Up next, Horizon Ginger Turbo. But this time, at 1080p with the visuals dialed back to fugly. And again, we're seeing 9930 split on the silicon. And it's a little chunky, but holding 30. Setting FSR to performance does a whole lot of nothing to help that. How about the decky default? Oh, that gets us into the 40s, and that does feel a lot better. Can't say I really notice a hit in the visuals, but once outside, we're back into the 30s. And if you don't stay down, I'm reading a third line of Vogon poetry. Cybertruck 2077 with the Steam Deck preset is a bit of amazing, all things considered. Even locked at 30 FPS, it feels buttery smooth. But it can drop in the 20s when you're standing around getting killed to death. Another crunchy 30 FPS title is God of War, using FSR 2.0 on the performance setting at 720p. It's playable, and I really mean that. 
ended up recording about 45 minutes gameplay because, fun, you just gotta squint a little and pretend it's a PS1 title. But if you're looking for maximum crunch, well, look no further. The Steam Deck preset delivered a consistent 30 FPS, but you're, you're not gonna be happy with those visuals on the big screen. Maybe even the small one. But it gets points for, you know, running. And something I was expecting a bit more from Trackmania 2020, even with everything dialed to the left at 720p, it spends more time in the 30s versus the 40s, and this is billed as an esports title. Fortunately, the vastly superior version Trackmania 2 Stadium runs like an absolute champ on the Geek Deck at 720p, and I'm not just saying that because I'm part of the TM2 crew that streams live every Tuesday and Friday, right here on YouTube. Alright, maybe a little bit. Link in the description. But where the Geek Deck shines is 2 and 2.5D gaming, Holobog, 1080p60, all day long. And we have Hollow Knight at home, same thing, 1080p60, not so much as a hiccup. A boy in his blob is slashing and dashing along at 1080p60, and Hipster Pixel Turtle goodness is more the same. This is the second game I accidentally ended up playing for almost an hour. Good times. But what about Geforce now? They just released an app and locked it to the Steam Deck because of course they did. Well, it loads right up on old Geeky D, and here I am playing Fortnite for the first time with zero idea what I'm supposed to be doing. But I try to make up for it with a gang of ambition. And I get it. This is a smooth experience with a controller. Now, it might be a different story when using a keyboard and gerbil. But I'm not noticing any latency issues, but I'm still blaming that on lag. But if you don't want to pay $20 a month to stream your own games, there's always Steam in-home streaming. It can be fussy to set up, but you can't argue with the price. This is the Stellar Blade demo running at 1080p using a 2060 streaming to the Geek Deck, and yeah, it's fine. But I did have to enable low latency when using DLSS. And finally, no deck is complete without Vacuum Tube. Set it up just like you do on Steam Deck and proceed to watch Nothing but interfacing Linux videos on YouTube, like a normal person. You know how the Xbox runs Windows-ish, right? Well, SteamOS runs on Linux-ish. And something they have in common is that you don't want to run either as your desktop operating system. Valve drops a subtle hint with the users should not consider SteamOS as a replacement for their desktop operating system bit in the first paragraph on the SteamOS page. And they're right. Trying to use it as a desktop is such a bad idea. Linus Tech Tips is planning a challenge video. With SteamOS becoming more of a thing, would you do another challenge where you and Luke switch as your main OS for a month? What I was waiting for was for Valve to say, okay, SteamOS is ready for prime time as a Steam as SteamOS, not as the OS that we run on the Steam Deck. So are we still waiting for that? I don't or? think we have to. Like, what's the challenge? Reading comprehension? All right, you know what? Confession time. I never bought a Steam Deck. I'm not into handhelds. I wanted a Steam Brick. Something that I can pop into the living room for casual gaming and streaming. This is it. And it's about $100 less than the cheapest Steam Deck. Link in the description. But if you get a PC laying around with AMD or Intel graphics, rub some SteamOS on it and see what you can get up to. You might be surprised and let me know how it went down in the comments. And maybe give this video a like while you're down there if you're feeling feisty. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome. <laughs>